brought to you by Prescient Investment Management. Informed by science, guided by insight. Prescient Investment Management is an authorized FSP. Welcome to Honest Money. Uh, t- today you've got me going solo um, and we're talking about retirement investing. So we do get quite a lot of questions from people who are actually already retired and wondering uh, what they should be doing with their investments to generate an income. Uh, and, and I think it's quite a scary time to be a retiree where you, you, you're living off your investments, you're, not, you're no longer earning an income. So whatever is going out from your bank account and your investments every month, uh, you haven't got a way of topping it up if, if things go badly in your investment life in the, in the future. So it is stressful for, for people who are retired and, and not knowing what they need to do with their money. Uh, and, and then you add on things like, you know, Ukraine invasion, uh, inflation crisis all around the world, uh, massively rising interest rates. And, and then that causes big uncertainties in the board, not even uncertainties, big lo- dislocations, interruptions, uh, and, and kind of collapses, I guess, in the bond markets and, and sometimes in the stock markets. Um, and you find that, uh, you know, for all investors, those are kind of tricky times and uncomfortable times. But for retired investors, uh, it adds a whole new layer of, of emotion and stress to, to them and, and how they're going to manage their money. So, so we should probably talk a little bit about uh, how you generate an income from your investments when you retired and maybe what are the strategies you should be following to make sure that you're, you're doing things correctly. So I think firstly, when you retired and you've got money that's been locked in a provident fund or a pension fund or a retirement annuity, your options are that you, you retire those in investments and that's a legal phrase. So you actually, although you might be retired, uh, what you're doing is you're telling SARS and you're telling everyone else that you are now retiring your uh, retirement savings and you're converting them into something that's going to pay you an income. And you've got two choices. You, you've got what they call a living annuity. And the second option is a compulsory annuity uh, or a life annuity. The, the, the insurance industry loves to create lots of names for the same thing. So life annuity or compulsory annuity. So let's just talk about a, a living annuity first. A living annuity, uh, let, let's say you retire and your provident fund has got a million rand and you've been fortunate to save other money elsewhere. So you can use this whole million rand as, as an income generating investment uh, in your retirement. So what you do is you convert that, uh, th- that annuity uh, or, or let's say your, your provident fund into a living annuity. The living annuity gets invested on day one and you've got quite a big choice inside a living annuity. You can go from uh, 100% invested in a money market fund, if that's what you wanted to do, uh, up to 100% in shares, if if you really wanted to do that, which I, I would not suggest. And you can do anything in between. So you could say, I want 25% in shares and the balance in government bonds and property companies and shares. You could go to 75% in shares and, and have the balance in the other asset classes. So you've got a fair amount of choice in terms of your underlying investments. And you have a lot of choice in terms of how much income you will draw from your living annuity. The law says you need to draw a minimum of 2.5% a year and a maximum you're allowed is 17.5% a year. So so you've got choices in terms of how you invest your money and you've got choices in terms of how you draw money out from that investment on a monthly or yearly basis, but both in terms of frequency. In other words, you could say, Pay me my income once a year, uh, you know, as one lump sum, and I'll I'll manage my my expenses on a monthly basis. Or you can say, pay me every month. But the total needs to be a minimum of two and a half percent of the value of your your uh, provident fund or your, your now living annuity, up to a maximum of seventeen and a half percent. Uh, and, and then just understanding that you've got quite a lot of choices, well, about how much of your money is invested in South Africa and how much you invest overseas. Uh, living annuities are not regulated like a normal uh, uh, pension fund, provident fund or an RA. They're not regulated by Regulation 28, which means you can, if you choose to, invest 100% of your money in offshore shares if that's what you what you want to do. There might be some restrictions where certain companies have have capacity limits in terms of their own asset swap capacity, and they can't uh, allow you to do that. But but at the very least, you, you can go up to I think it's about forty five percent of your funds will will be allowed to go offshore. 
So, so for me, um, I, I'm a big fan of living annuities for most people because I like the choice. I like being able to decide how my money is going to be invested. I like being uh, able to decide how much I'm going to draw. Uh, and, and then um, I like being able to maximize my, my mix of assets uh, according to my life. In other words, if I know I'm retiring at 55, I'm lucky that I can kind of retire a bit early uh, compared to most people who would probably retire at 65. Then for me, I want a large part of my retirement fund to be invested in shares, pro probably 75 to, to 85 percent. I don't want to be too conservative because there's a chance I live to age 100. So if I'm retiring at 55, that, that means I, I need to invest at least for another 45 years. And, and then I need a lot of exposure to shares both in South Africa and globally, so that I get the maximum capital growth while I'm, I'm, I'm drawing an income as well. So I, I like that choice. Whereas, you know, if you retire at 65 and let's say you're in really bad health and, and you don't think you've got uh, you, you know, much of a life expectancy, maybe you're only going to live 10 years, you don't need necessarily to, to invest a, a lot of your money in, in shares. You might say, I'm, I'm happy to draw a much bigger income I am really worried about uh, my life expectancy, so I'm going to I'm going to spend a bit more money um, at the start of my retirement than other people would, uh, and and therefore you allocate more money to cash and government bonds, for example, than than to shares because you want more certainty of income rather than uh, worrying too much about capital growth. So so that's what a living annuity gives you a, a lot of choice. The, the downside of a living annuity is that uh, people who are not financially disciplined uh, with their money, and if, if you haven't been financially disciplined through your entire working career and you get to retirement, guess what? You're not magically going to become uh, financially disciplined now. You're still going to be financially undisciplined, unfortunately. That's what history shows us. So, so people in that position will get to retirement, and let's say, again, you, you, you reach retirement at age 55. They'll be saying, Gee, I'm 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 going to start drawing eight percent a year, you know, and and uh, and next year, you know, things don't go so well. So now they draw ten percent a year, and before we know it, they're three or four years into retirement, and they're drawing seventeen and a half percent of of the value of their retirement funds every single year as an income. Those people are headed for disaster, and the reason is uh, that there is no investment. There is just no investment anywhere in the world that will grow at a guaranteed rate of twelve percent a year or more. And 12% is an important number because if you've got inflation of 6%, uh, th then you need to say, well, if my investments are growing at an average of 12% and I leave 6% behind of that growth to, to compensate for inflation, that means you've only got 6% of, of, of your money left to draw every year. Now, if you're starting on drawing 8% a year and you've got inflation of 6 th then already you're, you're destroying the buying power of your money by 2% a year. So, so there are lots of people who start out saying, saying to themselves, and they're probably, probably lying to themselves as well as their advisors, where they say, no, no, I'm, I'm going to be disciplined. I'm, I'm going to start this year in 8%, but next year I'm going to drop to 6 And that never happens. So, so that's the danger of, of living annuities for me, is that people who are not financially disciplined tend to abuse living annuities and, and draw much more than they're supposed to, especially very early in their retirement. And that's really, really dangerous. Uh, I, I mean, the, the, the stories are kind of numerous about people who kind of get to age 70 or 75 uh, and they've depleted the big chunk of their retirement capital because they simply drew too much in the early days. And, and so I don't like uh, living in your for people who are not financially disciplined. I think the other problem will be people who, who are, you know, financially compromised their whole lives. Let's just say, you know, they, they, they've never been able to kind of save enough money and they get to retirement at age 67. Uh, and and now they need to draw an income from their their limited retirement money, and they don't they're not spendthrift. They're not kind of just blowing their money. They just simply don't have enough. For people in that position, they're they're going to be in the same horrible uh, situation where they might start by drawing ten percent a year, uh, and and they're going to be in as we already now know they they're going to be destroying the buying power of their money almost on day one, and probably eight or ten years into retirement they have no money left. And, and so for people in that position or for people who are really not disciplined with their money, I think there is another option. And the other option is what we call living uh, life annuities or, or compulsory annuities. So just to explain that, a life annuity is 
I guess what our grandparents or our grandparents' grandparents would have been used to. You would have worked your whole career and at the end of your career, you would have retired and you would have been told that uh, you're going to get a guaranteed pension for the rest of your life. So they would have said to you, well done, you worked hard, you're now going to get 50,000 rand a month and uh, every year that will go up by inflation. So there is no worrying about stock markets going up or stock markets going down. There's no worrying about uh, drawing too much or too little or how long you do or don't live. All you've got is a guaranteed pension. It's a guaranteed amount of income every month. And, uh, and you hope that that escalates with inflation every year. So you start this year at 50,000 a month. And then the idea is that next year it might be 55 or 57,000 rand a month. And so you go. If you end up living, uh, you, you know, to age 120, that's your good luck. And if you die, you know, 10 years into retirement, that's your bad luck because uh, th th there is no money left for anybody else. That, that money that you've worked for for your whole time uh, is used to buy you the income. And once the income is paid to you, uh, th there is nothing left. So uh, th th that's maybe the biggest downside of a life annuity is that uh, you, you can't nominate beneficiaries. A lot of life annuities will say that uh, in the first five years of your retirement, if you die, we will leave some money to, to your beneficiaries. But if you die in five years and one day after, uh, um, after you've retired, all, all the money is gone. Uh, and, and so you know, that's a reason to be cautious of life annuities. There, there are structures in life annuities where you can say I'm married at retirement. And so if I die, my wife gets entitled to a portion of the pension. And, and, and most of them will do that. And, and it's usually around about 75% of the pension. So let's say uh, you started on 10,000 Rand a month when you retired. Uh, but if you die, then your wife will, will be paid uh, uh, 7,500 on, on her now retirement. Uh, and, and that will carry on for the rest of her life. And then when she dies, there is no money left. So for people who are really not disciplined with money, uh, I, I like life annuities because there is no contract decision after they've bought the life annuity. Once they've bought the life annuity, they've paid the money over to an insurance company, they get a pension, uh, and there is no more debate, there's no more discussion, there's no more, there are no more changes that they can make. And, and for me, uh, you know, that at least guarantees that they've got a certain amount of income, hopefully going up with inflation for the rest of their lives. And that's a very good outcome for people who are not financially disciplined. And then equally for, for people who are um, who don't have a lot of money at the, at the start of their retirements, they might have been very financially disciplined, but just simply just never got to the chance to build up enough money. They might find a life annuity attractive, especially when interest rates are high. Because uh, if interest rates are high, then the income that, that, that you'll be offered for the capital that you've built up will be pretty good. Whereas if interest rates are low, then a, a life annuity um, incomes that they're going to promise you are not that attractive. So, so for me, I think just understanding that when you're investing for retirement and you've got a pension fund or a provident fund or an RA, understand you've got two sets of choices. And, and you need to know yourself well enough and be honest enough with yourself to say, I am financially disciplined. I, I'm happy to take the, the um, volatility. In other words, the kind of big swings up or down with stock markets. Uh, and, and I've got enough money at retirement. Th then the, the likelihood is that you, you should take a, a living annuity. You can always later in life convert a living annuity to a life annuity. Uh, and, and so, you know, that's a decision you can make uh, as you get older. If you decide one day that you don't like the volatility of markets. But for people who choose the life annuity, you can never undo that. So once you've bought the life annuity, that, that's what you've got for forever. Uh, the, the only downsides that for, for me of, of a life annuity for people um, who are, who, let, let's say, for example, you retire and you don't have any beneficiaries. You're a single person, no children, no spouse, uh, no, no one that you need to look after. Then a life annuity might work for you. But just know that your risk is, uh, firstly, that the insurance company that you buy the life annuity from, that, that's one risk that they need to kind of uh, be around for your whole retirement to pay you that money. And secondly, that uh, you need to get the inflation protection built into that life annuity. In other words, you need to say to them, I'm only choosing a contract where I get CPI um, you know, as, a, as an inflation increase in my, in my life annuity. Don't go and choose where they say to you, look, we'll, we'll pay you a slightly higher income at retirement, but we're only going to escalate that at 5% uh, for five percent per year forever. Uh, because 5% per year forever uh, might sound good when inflation is only at 3%. 
but there will be times in your retirement career where inflation might be 10 or 15%. And, and that will be devastating to you if you're only getting 5% a year. And then I think that, you know, the, the one we've already spoken about with, with life annuities, that there is no money left for beneficiaries. That's not a big issue if you don't have beneficiaries or if you just don't have enough retirement uh, money saved, that then there is going to be nothing left for your beneficiaries anyway. And, and in that instance, then a, a life annuity might be very good for you. So I hope that helps and, and I hope that you, uh, you make the right decision and keep listening and, and thanks for following us. Brought to you by Prescient Investment Management. Informed by science. Guided by insight. Prescient Investment Management is an authorized FSP.